Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal tonight with Bruce McCurdy. Hey, Bruce. Hey, David. How are you doing tonight? Oh, you know. All right. Oilers lose 4-3 in overtime to the LA Kings. Bruce, we will do our two good things, two bad things, and two numbers. And because it was a stinker of a loss in some regards, we'll go with two bad things each. I don't know if we've done that this year. Have we? Have not had as painful a loss as this one, I don't think. Maybe we did it after the St. Louis game. We might have done it, might have done it earlier. Anyway, the other I game they tonight. lost when they led with 20 seconds left and gave up a tying goal. and then. Let's do our good things first. Pick one. What's your good thing this game, Bruce? Oh, uh, just wait. I'll tell you the grade A shots in the game, mm. which were kind of a good thing. Um, 16 to 13 for the Oilers, grade A shots. And the five alarm, the subset of five alarm shots, the most dangerous shots were uh, nine to five for the Edmonton Oilers. So um, there's that. At even strength, Bruce, five on five play, it was 12 to five for the Edmonton Oilers. All right, what is your good thing? And the score was uh, two one, I think. At five two on one. five. No, it was a two. Yeah, two to one because they one. got that goal off the face off right. the Kings did, and yeah. And the other one yeah. was a four four. Go ahead. What's your good thing? Yeah, uh, I'm going go, to go. I'm going to go with the physicality in this game, uh, where the hits were fifty to forty nine for Edmonton. And every player on both teams had a hit except for one, Cody Cece. Somehow went through this entire game without being credited with a hit, but uh, mm. every other team did. The Oilers had the big edge earlier, and the L.A. started to take it more physically to Oilers later in the game, and it appeared to be working a little bit. So, you know, this is a credit to both teams. Uh, eight hits for Zach Hyman, Hyman six for uh, Evander Kane, and... Uh, and uh, let's try that. Any better? Yeah. Was it not plugged in? No, it looks like my uh, thing got turned down a bit. Oh, okay. Uh, well, That's better. Equalizer or whatever. Uh, and on the other side of the puck, it was uh, six by Dano and sort of three or four by practically everybody on the whole team. That's a, that's a hard-working team. That... Uh, that uh, got the job done tonight, and they're going to be a handful for the Evans and Oilers in this series, and the Oilers have made their own life very difficult by letting that one slip away on them, so that's my good thing. <laughs> Not easier. I think the Oilers will win this series. I, I saw enough in tonight's game, Bruce, where I'm, I, I think the Oilers were the better team tonight, and they got they got, they got got beat. We're, we'll get into the bad things in, in kind of situational play, mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, I was really actually quite encouraged by the orders at even strength. You know, as I mentioned, it was 12 to five in grade A shots in five on five play. Um, the the orders did uh, were were strong in that situation. I think they they, you know, if there hadn't been a power play in overtime, I think the orders would have won this game. I just see them the king. You know, the Kings were not able to generate much at even strength at all. So. Um, let me just see, did they have, um, did they even get a uh, five alarm shot at even strength? I'm not even sure that they did, Bruce. So um, they got one five alarm shot at even strength the whole game. So um, my good thing is the way the orders started this game. I just thought they really took it to the Kings right off the top. Um, uh, there was a, a point shot deflected on net by Derek Ryan uh, that that Warren Fogle put in the net. And if LA had scored that goal in, in LA, probably would have counted. I remember one where I think it was last year where some King rammed the net and it went and it went in and it, and it counted. Um, I don't think it should have counted actually personally. I'm just no, I don't know. complaining about the refs. It wasn't a goal, but uh, it was a nice play by Fogle, the initial shot. Then Dreisaitl, um, Dreisaitl, uh, came out there and um, got one uh, really good shot at net. And then uh, the goal, the Oilers' first goal by Leon. 
Um, on the attack, Leon was such a force tonight. He was probably the Oilers' best player tonight. And um, that goal was just, you know, a, a, it was it was the Oilers' uh, dump and thump style that they need to adopt and they need to stick with. And um, if they just had done that, kept it simple, stuck with that, not take stupid penalties, they win this game. They couldn't resist. But on this play, Drysdale gains the blue line, dumps it, dumps it deep. Janmark and uh, Evander Kane battle hard for the puck in the corner. Um, I think it was Janmark's pass goes off a skate, and um, Drysdale just fires in an absolute blistering, beautiful shot for the first goal of the game. In the third period, he also he got another one, just another great, absolutely great play, a wrap around, and and Kane and Yamamoto are battling in front, and he puts it in, and it's three one, and the owner should win at that point, Bruce. It's, yes, it is. It is a combination of bad luck and bad game management um, that they didn't. Um, but we'll get into that. Let's let's move on to our bad things. What is your first bad thing? Oh, so many bad things. Yeah. Uh, you go first this time. I'm trying to remember what I had as my first. Okay, one. it's oh yeah, it's, you it's go the first, first anyway. First shift of the fir- third period, and McDavid and Drysdale get out there, and um, I'm not saying that I was a little worried, but I was a little worried because this is the Oilers have a two nothing lead. You don't need to score. You don't need to score, and you just you know it's the game is wide open then. So you've been dominating the play up until now, absolutely dominating the play five on five. And this is so this is a different situation though. It's um it's four on four, it's gonna be wide open. And it's it starts off with uh, Arvidsson gets the puck in in his own end and just charges right up the middle of the ice. Or excuse me, he doesn't he gets the puck, he charges up the middle of the ice and he takes a pass at center ice. And um, I think Leon, Leon was with him as they were leaving the King zone and Leon lost him. And it would have been nice if Leon could have angled him or slowed him down a little bit because he's just coming full steam ahead right at the two Oilers defenseman. He splits the defense and he uh, gets a, a five alarm shot. That was their only um, even strength shot. It was actually at four on four um, that they had. Then comes the goal. Um, and... Um, you know, McDavid charges in there. He, it, it was a great chance to score. I think he it was he he makes a pass, but it's picked off. Great defensive play. Comes back the and other Gavrikov, way. Gavrikov, the guy nobody wanted in Edmonton. Yeah, it was a nice play. That guy's good. He is he is a good defenseman. And um, it's a it's a two on three rush with Drysaddle steaming back, and Leon does a good job. I give him credit, steaming back to get back in the play, but he. He makes he goes to pick off the pass instead of taking the body or taking the middle of the ice so Kempe can't kick, cut into the middle of the ice. Leon goes to pick off the 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 uh, the puck, strip it off his stick, and Kempe makes a nice deke and he's into the middle of the ice, cutting across the middle of the ice, and um, uh, uh, Nurse can't get to. Can't get to him. I think it's I think it's Kempe who shoots that one in, no. if I'm not mistaken. Nurse is just slow getting to him as he cuts across him on the ice and unleashes a, a a great backhand shot. That's right. It was this. It was a backhander. So there you have it. It's now it's two one. All of a sudden, you can't get through the first minute of the third period, mm-hmm. and and I don't know if they should have had honestly. Um, might have been tempted in that situation to put out Derek Ryan and Matthias Janmark and and just get through that moment because you do not need to score. And I know why they do it. Like, I know, you, you know, you want your best players on the ice. That, that's the thinking all the time. But I just think in terms of game management, maybe you don't do that in that in that situation. Sure I've talked about this earlier in the year, closing out periods, starting periods. Do you always go with McDavid and Dreisaitl? This is, this is a time when I wouldn't have, personally. I would have rather seen guys who are going to keep it close to shut the game down, put Derek, put Ryan McLeod and Derek Ryan out there. They'll do it. They'll get the job done. And I would have one preferred of, one of the Put one of the two guys out there with his regular line mate. I'm pretty sure that was the only shift that McDavid and Drysaddle played together all game at even strength. There you and go. as you say, they didn't need it. I mean, uh, they took a penalty late in the second. Uh, Kane took a dumb high sticking penalty. Dumb penalty. Uh, and then Iofolo 
took a dumb high sticking penalty for LA to even it out. And I thought not only did we get out of the period, we don't have to kill a power play at the start of the third, but I honestly think they might've been better off trying to kill that first minute as opposed to doing, uh, doing what they need to be doing. And, uh, Honestly, uh, I didn't like the pass from McDavid. I mean, obviously, Gavrikov made a sprawling play. But, geez, he's in alone. Shoot the damn puck. Yeah. You know? And if there's one thing that I personally hate as a fan, it's any when you have a lead, especially late in the game, third period of a game, you have the puck in the other team's zone, and you make any pass that's back in the direction of your own net, you damn well better make that pass because you trap your line mates and the other team has a clear jailbreak if they pick it off, and that's exactly what happened there. So I was uh, not too happy with uh, with McDavid's decision there. I mean, the play obviously was to shoot and score, right? But didn't even shoot. <sighs> See, and this had, is it's, it's the game. cascade starts then, right? They just had to get through that. Sh- just get through yeah. that sh- that four on four. It's wide. You know, it's it's wide. Like anyway, I made my point. All right, Bruce, mm-hmm. what's your back thing? Yeah, well, basically, Oilers defensive play in the third. Now, this is a team that's given up six goals in its last seven games, and then had a two shutout periods tonight. They've given them one goal in their last eight periods directly against the Kings. Keep doing what you're doing, but no, we're not going to do that. We're going to be a little bit passive. We're not going to drive the play in the other team's direction. We're going to get four whole shots on net the entire third period and give up 11. And uh, it just they started playing, I thought, soft around the puck a little bit. And L.A. was winning more and more of the battles. And Edmonton, they just didn't seem to have the, it's like they were waiting for the minutes to tick down, but they weren't doing the, all the hard effort. They were doing some of it. Like it wasn't like totally brutal, but there was key moments where they weren't able to get the puck out. And they lost that face off on the 3 2 goal where it was, puck was just going nowhere. And all of a sudden, Hyman uh, can't make a play with the puck and picks off uh, Eckholm. And then the next thing you know, it's in the net like one little chip pass over and uh, Kempe buries it. So that's three to two. And then even on the tying goal and, you know, 17 seconds left in regulation, six on four. First of all, Bouchard takes a very poor penalty to set up a six on four for like a minute 50 at the end. What a nightmare time to take that penalty. And then they just could not win the little battles again along and near the blue line. L.A. was ma- able to make all these plays to keep it in, keep it in, keep it in, keep it in, keep the pressure on. And finally, they uh, uh, were able to make a, a Victor Arvidsson, who had an absolutely fantastic game for L.A. Uh, I thought he was brilliant in this game. This was a guy we never saw last year. Uh, and he made a nice uh, lob pass across to... Uh, uh, Dano fired a shot. It looked like Skinner had it uh, had it trapped, but it trickled through into the crease, and there was not a single oiler within like 15 feet of the crease. There was two kings standing on the edge of the blue paint, and one of them jammed it in. And there was Nurse was pulled out of position, I think, um, uh, trying to front the shot, and didn't get there. And Ekholm was kind of picked off by Kane. He didn't get over and. Once Stu didn't make that first, didn't hold the puck, like it, there was no, no, no uh, uh, net front presence by the Oilers in front of their own net with a one-goal lead and 20 seconds left. So that's pretty yeah. poor. And I think by our count, they gave up eight, eight grade A shots and four five-alarm shots in the third period, which I bet you is the worst period that we've recorded in the last 10 games. Yeah, and four of those were in the power play in the last two minutes there. So there's that. And it's just, um, yeah, it was not a good game. Um, that 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 was a great pass from Arvidsson over to Deneau on the, uh, mm-hmm. on the, the game-tying goal. It really was. So it's hard to, to fault anyone, although I, I, I do think that Nurse might have been on Kopitar but he had to front Kopitar because McDavid was a little high uh, in this in the play, not covering the the shooter. So Nurse realizes that he, he's got to cover both guys a little bit, and then he so he fronts Kopitar. Maybe he would have done it anyway, but it turns out 
he's on the wrong side of Kopitar when he needs to be um, on the defensive side. And uh, he wasn't, and Kopitar was able to put that in. And Skinner just wasn't able to squeeze it and make that save. I thought he had saved it, and mm. he didn't. So um, Skinner wasn't bad this game, Bruce, but he wasn't he wasn't outstanding either. Like he Definitely didn't not. he didn't uh, save them the game. My second bad thing, Bruce, is what I'll call f- um, five bad penalties. Um, Hyman took a bad penalty. Uh, is it three for Kane? No, two for Kane. Kane, two bad penalties in Bouchard. And you just, the Kings have a, they had the fourth best power play in the NHL this year. Mm-hmm. Clips along at 25%. This is a good power play. You can't keep giving them chances. They're going to figure it out. They're going to solve you. And they did. And they scored, they scored a power play a game time goal and a power play winning goal. And um, the others are going to have to figure out down low Maybe have Deharnay out there a little more, just to, to start the PK. Have Deharnay out there, a big, bigger player. Um, some, some guys, you know, um, CC was out there. I think no, it was Ekholm and Nurse actually. It wasn't CC. Um, but I mean, it's not like these guys are small. But Deharnay is that much bigger. And maybe Bukestad, make he was out there for the game-winning goal. But have him try to get him as the guy, the the low guy, so you can have these bigger players. Um, because the Kings really in tight there, they can do they can do some real damage. They've got some fantastic skill players in Kempe and Arvidsson and Kopitar, so um, it's going to be tough. You can't take that many bad penalties. Then the penalty in overtime, considering it's overtime and um, uh, it was a fairly you know Deharnay probably shouldn't have swung his stick like that, but it it he he. I don't know if he knocked him down or do you think he was going down already? It was kind of, it was a marginal penalty, Bruce. Although, you know, it was Doughty's penalty in the first. <sighs> um, I, I think if, if the te- other team's rushing up the ice, that's one of the situations when the refs are going to call it. Like when they think that you're trying to take away a, a man, in, like a rush attempt. Um, maybe that's what they're going to call it. Maybe that's, that's what they were thinking. What did you think? I hated the call. Uh, yeah. I hated the, uh, like Deharnay De was shoulder to shoulder with Lazat in the neutral zone, uh, and uh, Deharnay fell. His stick. I, I I don't think he swung his stick. I just think that was the the consequence of him stumbling to the ice the way that he did. If he made any contact at all, then. Are you, are, uh, do you want to just check your mic, Bruce? Just t- just take take a second to check the mic. Yeah. Like, oh, I hear that. Better? Oh, that. That wasn't better. That's that was fuzzy all of a sudden. I'm turning up the button, and I thought this was perfect all this time until That's now. Good. What changed? That's, yeah, I don't know what. I maybe it, maybe there people won't hear, it, but from my end at least. No, they'll hear what you're hearing. Oh, uh, maybe. Sorry, folks. Uh, may, uh, oh, it might just be me, Bruce. Sorry. Anyway, uh, anyways, uh, he just if he touched like if he touched him he tapped him the puck was already out of Lazat's reach the Oilers defenseman was going on to it but the thing is it was a nothing play and they took that play to decide an overtime game in the National Hockey League which for the 60 years that I've been watching playoff hockey the overtime standard is you have to take away a scoring chance this wasn't even remotely close to either creating or taking away a scoring chance. It was a nothing play where a guy stumbled, there was incidental contact. You're going to decide the game on that? Thank you, Mr. Referee. I got no complaint with any of the other penalties. The one on Bouchard, he cross-checked the guy in the side of the helmet. He missed what he was trying to do. But, you know, even though there's two minutes left, and you're going, how the hell can they call one now? You see the penalty and say, well, they got to call it. The two on Kane, they had to call those. The one on Hyman, they had to call that one. The first one on Bouchard, I don't know, but uh, Edmonton got a two-man advantage in the first period, and from then on, it was all L.A. Six power plays to one the rest of the way, and two to win it. And in the end, uh, L.A. got eight minutes and 22 seconds on the power play, and Edmonton got two minutes and 27 seconds. So eight minutes to two in power plays in this game. Thank you there, Stripes. Welcome to California. We haven't got there yet, but uh, anyway, here we go. But like I say, most of those penalties were on the Oilers. I thought there was penalties on L.A. that they could have also called that they didn't, but this also is nothing new. 
Anyway, so they got the power play and what it take them, uh, what, about uh, 16 seconds. And there was just no chance Edmonton was going to kill it. Uh, Nuge uh, gave the puck away early yeah, in that Yeah, well, in that, yeah. Uh, Bukestad won the draw, and Nuge tried to push it to Nurse behind the net, as they'd done successfully to start the, I think, three penalties at the beginning of the game. But he didn't get it to him. And then uh, from then on, it was... Five yeah. active kings against four passive Oilers, and it ended the way you knew it would end very quickly. Pass, 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 pass shot, score. And CC got sucked way off to the side on the on the he one did. pass, and he wound up in a place where he couldn't defend either the pass to Arvidsson below the goal line nor the shot from Iapolo that beat Skinner, and he was just nowhere. And Nugent Hopkins, he was just... I don't know what happened to him in this game. He had a poor game. And he was, uh, I mean, he got set up earlier in overtime and he fell down, like right in the slot. He's got a great chance and he just blew a wheel. So that beautiful skater, Nugent Hopkins, of all the times to fall down. But then on the winner, he was, again, just passive, like two or three feet off to the side of the guy who pounded the puck in the net. Like, check the guy. So it was just, you know, it was just a... a uh, you could just tell it was coming, and it was coming fast. And when they once they called that that penalty, I was uh, not confident it was going to get killed in 16 seconds, and they didn't even come close. Hard to believe, so. eh, that the Oilers lost. By the way, the the sound problems were all at my end, Bruce. I just had my volume turned down, oh, yeah? so I, my apologies to you okay, on that. Okay, maybe it's so too I, loud now because I kept no, turning it, this yeah. thing up. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's good. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it, it's hard to believe they lost. I mean, this is a team that seemed to have solved a lot of the issues. And, and how do they lose? They lose like on a face-off play all year long that had been haunting them. The penalty mm-hmm. kill all year long that had Two been haunting them. They looked like they had solved it. And, um, you know, and then a, a four-on-four play where I, I see some marginal defensive play by their star players. Yep. And and um, these are the, these are the things that sunk the Oilers this year. And they all blew up in the third period. The usual suspects came out, and I, you know, this is this is this is life. Uh, Bruce. Okay, did you have a second bad thing? Ah, uh, well, it was that game-winning goal by. Oh, Paul. the game-winning goal. Okay. Yeah, the penalty, the poor penalty killing, and the quick goal. Okay, we'll move on to numbers, and I'll start it off with uh, Connor McDavid. Very. Uh, um, this was going to be like a funny number because I was going to say, did you expect the orders to win this game when Connor McDavid's got this, this kind of stat line and they didn't win the game. And he did have that kind of stat line. I mean, we, we pegged him as a culprit. Um, I'm not sure if you agree with me on the, 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 the power play goal at the end. You'll have to have another look at that maybe. Okay. Cause I kind of, I watched it again and added that in, but we okay. pegged him as a culprit on, um, the um three the first third period goals so. three all three third period goals and um you know he lost the face off on the one he these his pass was picked off on the other and and then he's uh, out of position i think slightly at least on the uh the game time goal so he is zero goals zero assists zero points and minus two and a well what we think is a well-earned minus two um, he was nine for 11 on the face off dot. We no, record nine for 20, nine wins, 11 losses, yeah. Yeah. Nine, for, nine wins, 11 losses, nine yeah. for 20. Thanks for that, Bruce. And, um, he, he had one unbelievable play where he rushed the puck in on the power play and drew a penalty on Mikey Anderson when Anderson had to grab him. I mean, it was one of the finest rushes of the year, but at even strength, Connor McDavid was, um, he was zigging when he should have been zagging. And I've seen this before in a, in a, in a game mm-hmm. or two where he just seems off. And he yeah. just seemed off this game. He didn't seem sharp. He seemed to be fighting the puck a little bit. And Bruce, he had not, we, we count great major contributions to grade A shots. He had not one major contribution to a grade A shot at even strength. Wow. And he averaged, uh, he had two in the game on the power play. He averaged uh, seven major contributions to grade A shots per game this year, seven, and he just had two. Um, So at even strength, um, not his game. I'd have to look. 
to me, it didn't look like the Kings shot him down so much as he he was just off. He was just um, they were they were on him. And maybe if I watched more closely, I'd see some solid defensive play that I missed, You're maybe wrong. from from Gavrikov and others. But I, I I do think he had moments where he had an opportunity to do more, and he just made the wrong play. But it could be more. Com- I'm sure it's more complicated than that. I'm, um, the Kings probably did a, a sensational defensive job. Well, anytime he tried to beat somebody one on one, he got this puck poked off his stick. That happened a lot. That did that happen happened a lot. Yeah, Doughty several times, and but not just Doughty. It would seem like it was whoever it was one on one. He'd come in and he'd come out the other side without the puck. And usually he's going to win. You know, he's not going to beat the guy all the time, but it's not very common that he doesn't beat him. Doesn't you know get around him at least some of the time. He seems slow, Bruce, moving. He didn't seem like he was moving his feet when he, when usually when he attacks, he just like on the great play when he rushed in, he just boom. But he didn't seem to be attacking them with that incredible speed that he has. Is that what, did you notice that? That's what I thought I saw. That it just was not there tonight for some reason. It was like the one night or like there's three nights a year when Connor McDavid doesn't have his skating legs. And this was the third of, of the three the last yeah your number yeah i think i'll go with five which is uh the number of times the Oilers have been in the playoffs in the uh connor mcdavid leon dry era and all five times they finished second in their division all five times they started the playoffs with a home ice game and all five times they lost game one in the playoffs at home Five in a row. They lost 3 2 to the Sharks in 2017 when they had a 2 0 lead. Let that get away. Lost in overtime. Uh, they lost 6 4 to Chicago in a nightmare of a game during the play ins. Uh, it was a Mike Smith created nightmare to some extent, but it was just a very sloppy, bad game. I mind you, after four months of no hockey. And then yeah. in uh, 21 against the Jets. They could only muster one goal, and they lost. I think it was 4-1 with a couple of empty netters, but it was just sort of a uh, an uninspiring kind of game. And then last year, uh, they lost 4-3 to the Kings on a late mistake again, I think, by Mike Smith, but again on a game that was just too sloppy by half. And i got to extend that, that uh, observation to this game. This is a team that's been tight, tight, tight for a while, and this was a very sloppy performance. Uh, by them, uh, and uh, uh, especially later in the game. I mean, obviously, they gave up all four goals in the third period in overtime. And uh, a lot of those goals were because of uh, of sloppy play or, or you know, just not being able to, to uh, protect the net front or protect the puck or win a battle. And uh, they got burned. And uh, I, I just, I didn't, they didn't, seem to have what it took down the stretch to, you know, take the puck down the other end and play with it down there like they've been doing a lot of lately. They were really sort of one and done if they even got the one and yeah. playing back. And playoffs are different, but, man, you'd like to think after four years in a row, you'd, ha- you'd, you'd learn a game one of the playoffs is 60 minutes long, and it might even be 70 minutes long like it was tonight. Well... I I just it was funny Bruce because as the third period went along I was hoping to see the grinder lines get out there because I thought they were playing better they were mm-hmm. playing smarter hockey they were playing better defensive hockey and Fogel almost scored with uh, four minutes left he drove the puck to the net and yeah. almost put it in it was a great play I just thought those lines had it going on they they knew their roles and they executed their roles and they were they were really strong those two bottom lines. Um, Drysaddle's line obviously um, got the two big goals. Leon was was great, but I just I just didn't feel confident defensively with the top two lines on the ice. And um, hopefully that changes. I mean, last year um, to beat the Kings, the Oilers had to discover a defensive game that they didn't know they had in them, and they hadn't demonstrated until that time in Game Six. And then they did that. And they mm-hmm. won. The, the top two lines have got to get their defensive play together. 
and the offense will come out of that. It will flow out of that. And um, just other than that, Bruce, I, 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 I'm not, I think the orders were played well. There was some aspects of their game that, that really worked. I thought their defensemen were pretty good. I thought that the, the, those two lines were good. I thought Leon Dreisaitl was had some heroic, fantastic offensive moments. Just crank it up, guys, on defense, and don't take uh, the top two lines, and don't take bad penalties, and they'll win the next. They'll win the next game, and this series. Yeah, well, last year they came back and won game two, six nothing in game three, eight to two to seize back home ice control of the series, and then the home teams. No, then they, they lost game four and game five in overtime to Adrian Kempe goal. And then they had to win game six in L.A. and game seven at home. And it was it was tougher than it should have been, con- considering they beat the Kings twice in a row by six goals early in the series. And yet they got themselves behind the eight ball. And that's the thing about playoffs. It doesn't take much. I mean, this is a little game. You could say they were the better team in most of it. But guess what? It's 0-1. You haven't got home ice advantage anymore. You're already under a ton of pressure to win game two. And it's uh, they could lose game two like it's despondent. They had a 15 game unbeaten streak to, to clinch home ice advantage, and just like last year, the big run at the end to get home ice. And what do they do? Piss it away in game one. <clears throat> Not a happy, <laughs> Not a happy Bruce. Not happy. All right, Bruce, we will talk again Wednesday night. On ho- hopefully, we'll both be happier. Yeah, yeah. Th- thanks for talking tonight. Yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. And in the meantime, and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast.